is CGTN, China Global Television Network. This week, we celebrate Africa Day. 1963, the free countries of Africa gathered together to found the Organization of African Unity. May 25th has since stood for Africa's struggle for liberation and unification. Well, now in a rapidly evolving world with new demands for the present and the future, how relevant to the continent is Africa Day? Well, this year's theme of the AU Agenda 2063, we look at what gains have been made since that defining moment and what challenges still stand in the way of Africa achieving its full potential. I'm Lindy Mtongana. Welcome to Talk Africa. Africa Day was first celebrated on the 25th of May 1963, which means 2018 is its 55th anniversary. Let's take a brief look at the origins of Africa Day and the continent's journey through the years. Africa Day all started in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. It was on the 25th of May, 1963. And two-thirds of African states were free. Leaders from these countries gathered at the founding of the Organization of African Unity, which later became what we now call the African Union. At a meeting chaired by Emperor Haile Selassie, the attendees assembled to write a bold charter which laid out the organization's goals to help liberate those still stuck under colonial rule and to unify the free African states. In his remarks, Emperor Selassie proclaimed, May this convention of union last a thousand years. They declared the day Africa Freedom Day. Well, 50 years later, the African Union is forging on. Colonial rule is now a thing of the past, but the continent as a whole is still working towards unification. The continent's efforts to establish a regional free trade area, open up the skies and realize self-funding of the AU are all attempts towards that direction. Now, Africa Day provides a chance to reflect on the history of Africa and celebrate the rich cultures and advancements. While the continent has faced numerous challenges, advancements have indeed been made and Africa is being transformed from what Western media used to call the hopeless continent to a continent on the rising. Kenya's capital of Nairobi, for instance, is a bustling metropolis and has become a tech hub. With innovations such as mobile money, the country now leads the mobile money market in Africa. With a bevy of creative entrepreneurs, the country is now looking to create its own Silicon Valley. Ethiopia was once known for mass famine in the 1980s. Now, according to the International Monetary Fund, the country is Africa's fastest growing economy with booming infrastructure construction, paving the way for further growth. Rwanda too is making strides after a dark period in its history. Since the 1994 genocide, the East African nation is emerging as an economic and social force in the region. For years, it's been on top of the World Bank's ease of doing business list. The country has also become a role model in the region and beyond in addressing the issue of gender equality, with women making up around 64% of its parliament. Across the continent, hopes are being raised as Africa is increasingly speaking in one voice in pursuit of stability, more development opportunities and more balanced partnerships. Indeed, Africa is a continent with a rich history, containing periods of difficulties and phenomenal success. This year's theme for Africa Day is the African Union Agenda 2063. Well, let's take a closer look now at some of its goals. The African Union laid out a bold plan in 2013, aiming to create an integrated, prosperous and peaceful continent by the time the Union celebrates its centenary in 2063. To realize those goals, the AU is focusing on inclusive growth and development. Gains have been made through the establishment of an African continental free trade area earlier this year. It's expected to increase intra-African trade by 50% within four years. 
Agenda 2063 also aims to create a more peaceful and secure Africa. The continent has been rocked by multiple conflicts and militant attacks. Silencing the guns is an uphill struggle, but one Africa can't afford to lose. In addition, the AU is advocating for good governance, including democracy, justice and upholding the rule of law. Finally, Agenda 2063 looks to create a united Africa, one that can play a significant role in the global arena. And joining me now to further explore Africa Day, its significance to the continent and this year's theme of Africa Vision 2063, I'm now joined by my panel of expert guests. From Lagos, Nigeria is Toyosi Akarele Ogunsiji, a social entrepreneur and development expert also named by Forbes as one of the 20 most powerful young women in Africa in 2014. And with me in studio on my far left is Erastas Mencha, former deputy chairperson of the African Union Commission and also a former secretary general of the Common Market for East and Southern Africa. And also with us is Professor Noah Midamba, an international relations expert. Thank you all for joining us on the program today. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. to, to begin with, I want to start with you, Professor Midamba. On the 25th of May, 1963, 30 African leaders met in Addis Ababa and they founded the Organization of African Unity. Just talk us through the historical significance of that occasion. The, uh, the most significant thing on that day is that 30 African countries and 30 African leaders became free people. Mm -hmm. They were free men who were speaking on behalf of the free Africans. Uh, there was incredible energy. There was incredible hope for the continent that will uh, eventually grow to compete with our colonial past mm -hmm. and embrace the, uh, the, the Western and also the Far Eastern. Mm -hmm. uh, that spirit um, eventually sort of dwindled as we face um, some serious uh, uh, development, progress, mm -hmm. political, economic, social, all combined together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very pleased that it's re-emerging again mm. uh, with the AU and also with some leaders um, like Kagame, uh, who is uh, exemplified. Mm -hmm in this continent. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. And bringing you into the conversation, Erastus, yes, 1963 marks the moment when, you know, the chains have fallen off, but perhaps that's not enough. Um, consequently, some would argue that we have, in very important fundamental ways, failed to live up to the hopes of, to the spirit of 1963. I'm not sure that's what you would say, Wendy, because if you look at the agenda that was set up in 1963, first, as the leaders sat in Addis Ababa to draft the charter for the Organization of African Unity, there were three fundamental uh, goals. One of them is to continue to completely decolonize the continent. Mm -hmm. The second one was, of course, to restore the dignity of the African through the spirit of Pan-Africanism. And the third one, of course, socioeconomic transformation including perhaps as part of that building a nation state. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as decolonization is concerned, that was achieved, mm -hmm. of course, at great cost. And ho ho happily, you come from South Africa, mm -hmm. and you know what it took uh, both inside South Africa and outside South Africa to gain that independence. Mm -hmm. And restoring the dignity of African people, that has been done. At least now we can walk, talk, we can walk tall and we can sit at the, any table mm -hmm. in the world to argue the African case. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to socioeconomic transformation, yeah. we have failed. As Noah was saying a little earlier, we faced some headwinds, mm -hmm. uh, some of it political, mm -hmm. some of it economic, uh, but we fell down 
but we are we dust ourselves and we are still on the march. Mm. Mm. Uh, Toyosi in Lagos, let's bring you into the conversation now. Uh, of course, as we're hearing, Africa has indeed made progress, but in still in some areas failing critically. Toyosi, just share your thoughts on the progress made so far and the journey that lies ahead. I mean, I would say that Africa has come a long way in terms of how much we have achieved as a continent over the last uh, couple of years since 1963. However, um, the attendant, several attendant challenges in different countries um, have impeded our development in various facets. And um, you think about issues of uh, youth unemployment, you think about huge levels of poverty, you think about lack of industrialization, um, you think about the fact that we're still struggling in terms of intercontinent, you know, in, um, internal trade systems within the continent. Um, I'm not sure that some of the dreams and the hopes and aspirations of the founding fathers of Africa who sat down together in, two, in 1990, 1963. However, I'm, I'm, I'm positive and I'm optimistic because of the generation that I currently belong to. Um, we can see how the youth of Africa are pushing forward and putting the continent on the map in terms of how we're navigating the continent and the world through innovation, uh, through artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, robotics. Um, even though um, the quality of education that is currently available on, on the continent can be better, um, I think that the young people of Africa, I think that Africa needs to uh, do a better job with Indeed. leveraging the potential and the collective capacity of young people Indeed. in the different you know in the different countries of Africa I, I want to look closely at the question of opportunities for young people in Africa um, you know the young people are trying their best to make your best out of a difficult situation but perhaps are being failed by others let's start with the education sector there was there was a study done in 2015 um, in East Africa that looked at the employability of graduates uh, on the continent and it said that ultimately employers found that in East Africa the majority of graduates were half-baked unfit for jobs lacking in job market skills are African countries failing to produce quality graduates majority of uh, of our educated people are either diaspora uh, educated or local that are completely irrelevant uh, to the need of the African people mm -hmm. because the people who are teaching them a lot of times are irrelevant uh, to, to our need and therefore we need a new mindset mm -hmm. uh, that we need to settle looking at the, 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 the environment next door and how we can deal with this environment based on our own solution. Mm -hmm. uh, what China has done is different from what England did mm -hmm. uh, and from what America do. Indeed, and therefore, Africa need mm -hmm. to apply the same. Yes. And, and on that note, I mean, mm -hmm. it is certainly very encouraging to see extra effort being put into education. Uh, but Toyosi, I want to come back to you. It is also equally disturbing to see that uh, it's fundamentally African governments are failing to stem the tide of young people choosing to join terror organization uh, terror organizations or young people choosing to search for a better life, risking their lives often uh, to find some better opportunities outside the continent. What do you make of that, Toyosi? Um, I, I, I think that African leaders need to uh, pay a lot of attention to the quality of education that has been given to young people on the continent uh, and whether we're giving access to, you know, the children in the rural areas, um, the opportunity to be able to go to school and the, the purpose of the education that we've provided and set, set in motion for the young people in Africa. Um, I think it's important to define education and begin to focus on how education empowers the, this emerging generation of young people to become competitive side by side young people from other parts, other continents of the world. Mm, um, education that, does, that educates people, that, that that, that educates young people out of creativity. Education that does not give you access to the quality of decent jobs that you deserve as Indeed. a young person. The kind of education that doesn't put you in the room and gives you access to the kind of opportunities 
-hmm. that young people of your age or of other continents are able to get is the kind of education that, you know, um, allowed, that, that puts young people in harm's way and allows young people in Africa to take to terrorism. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, but then you, you also need to think about the fact that if we don't industrialize in Africa, if we do not take advantage of the fact that 64% of the uncultivated arable land in the entire world is in Africa, mm -hmm. if we're not querying things like, why does Africa export raw cocoa to the world, yet we only get 2% of the over $100 billion market, market value of, your, of chocolate mm -hmm. um, in the entire world. If you don't think about the fact that some of Africa has a huge population of young people, and the smartest people that you'll ever meet in any continent of the world you go to come from this continent. I think that the job of African leaders is to begin to focus the potential of young people. Because the truth is, in, in a situation where you do not you know, sustainably invest in human capital development, the terrorists would provide an alternative for these young people. So, and create so, jobs for them if we don't create jobs for them. So to your see then, to what, the I'm, what I'm hearing from you is that, there, that there's, there's a reason to be very critical about leadership in Africa, that perhaps it's political will that is lacking. I mean, organizations like the AU have been criticized time and time again to adequately hold African leaders to account. What's your response to that, Erastos? <clears throat> if you look at now what uh, Agenda 2063 is saying, it is a kind of introspection, and if you look at the seven aspirations, it comes out very clear that Africa does recognize where the failures were. That's why, for instance, if you look at aspiration number two, it says governance and democracy and the rest, where we feel that Africa has missed uh, the, the mark in that area. Areas like peace and security mm -hmm. has eluded Africa mm -hmm. for a long time. Uh, okay. Integration. Africa has not been fully integrated as much as we would have liked. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at uh, the rest of the continent, Europe, intra Europe trade is over 60 percent. Asia is over 50 percent. Africa is a country less than 15 percent. Mm -hmm. Yes, these are the failures. And as uh, Toyosi says, we have not industrialized. Uh, we are exporting raw materials. We are just a market. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why Africa now has taken steps to say, under Agenda 2063, mm -hmm. Africa must take its destiny in its own hands. We Indeed. cannot continue to blame colonialism. We cannot continue to blame the past. And we must, the, tick, uh, the time is ticking. And with this youth knowledge that we have, if we don't create employment, we are sitting on a time bomb. Absolutely. We'll mm. have to take a short break at mm. this point. But when we come back, we'll still be in conversation with this uh, expert panel of guests to delve further into the significance of Africa Day on the continent. Stay tuned. China Global Television Network. From broadcast centers in Beijing, Washington, and Nairobi. A unique global perspective. Six channels and a video content service. News when you want it and where you want it. On TV screens, websites, mobile platforms, and social media. CGTN. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Let's continue our discussion on the significance of Africa Day. Toyosi Akarele Ogunsiji is still with us in Lagos, Nigeria. She's a social entrepreneur and development expert. And with me in studio on my far left is Erastas Mwencha, the former deputy chairperson of the African Union Commission. And also right next to me, Professor Noah Midamba, an international relations expert. Toyosi, yeah. let's bring you back into the conversation here. Uh, of course, the, the key problems that uh, many African countries face comes down to tribal issues. But as we've also been talking, uh, bad governance is something that needs to be addressed. Now, as we know, young people on the continent make up the majority of voters. Is it young people that are to blame for electing bad governors, bad leaders? <laughs> um, thank you. You know, I always say one of the things that I've been saying in recent times is the fact that uh, the political elite of Africa 
have mastered the art of the of ensuring that perhaps if the young people are not uh, adequately uh, educated or if they're not adequately economically empowered they would be they would consistently remain at the mercy of the establishment and therefore the establishment determines the ultimate outcomes of elections um, I believe that the full bloom you know security crisis in different countries of Africa as are uniquely you know, uh, the, uh, the unique reality, uh, based on the unique realities of those different countries. For example, you know about the Boko Haram uh, insurgencies in northeast Nigeria. And, uh, you know, that, that crisis is, has been as a result of the consistent economic deprivation of the people that feel, you know, that are one, hugely uneducated, and are secondly, not given any form of you know, jobs that keep them busy, that allows them to be able to take hold of their own uh, destinies. Mm -hmm. Rwanda is a crucial example when it comes to, you know, youth inclusion in governance. Mm. There's no way you can get old people making policies and decisions on a future they are not going to be part of. Indeed. So part of this process is that youth inclusion in governance and democratic processes would ensure that you mainstream the voices of young people to identify the challenges of young people and to provide solutions to the problems of young people. On the other side, you, you need to think about the fact that Africa needs to depart from foreign aid. Mm -hmm. There is no dignity in depending on another man to come and solve your problems mm -hmm. for you. There is mm -hmm. no pride in poverty. Therefore, Africa needs to begin to think of the importance of sustenance and self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Such let's that talk we're more able to about create that. our own jobs, create our own products, you know, increase our exports, minimize our imports, mm -hmm. cut our taxes so that we can attract foreign direct investments from other countries, from, from huge corporations who would like to do business on our continent. Mm -hmm. But Tanzania, for example, has 30% taxes in addition to the fact that you also still need to pay value at the tax. Sorry to interrupt you there, but let's explore that question uh, of our independence, our sovereignty. We celebrate freedom in Africa uh, when, we, when we mark Africa Day, but how free are we as a continent if we are still so heavily dependent on aid? Let's start with you, Rastas. Yeah, the economic uh, design that uh, Africa inherited where we were simply exporting raw materials and we were markets has persisted, unfortunately persisted to today. Uh, if you look at exports leaving Africa, uh, the value addition is very small. And if you look at imports coming to Africa, it's all machinery, capital, finished goods. Mm -hmm. And even some of the things, you got some of the countries importing water, importing toothpaste, which is really a disaster. Yet Africa, if you look at the continent, with a population of 1.2, 1.3 billion people, a GDP of 2.5 billion, and a consumption base of over 4 billion, you have enough base. So one of the things, unfortunately, the colonial design of our small markets has been a constraint and a lack of leadership, lack of vision, mm -hmm. to see that uh, integration is not a zero-sum game, that if we integrate, we become small. So we have remained with that dwarf mentality mm -hmm. of, of thinking these small kingdoms that we preside as a nation state that are not even viable. Yes, that is an area that Africa must tackle and change. And you know what's also worrying is mm. that we may be moving from one bad situation to another. Mm. Uh, African countries are now in more debt than they've ever been before. Mm. This is, of course, another growth uh, mechanism, but is it good for Africa, essentially? For instance, take uh, um, China, African trade right now. Uh, the latest number I have is $220 billion against Africa providing $93 billion. Mm. Now, when, when you take that, uh, the, the amount of debt uh, that is taken in order to do that. So we are going to reach a place like Zimbabwe where you have to borrow money to pay your debt mm. and so that there's nothing left for you mm. for development. And now that is taking opportunity away from the youth, uh, opportunity away from unemployed. And what do you expect of them to do? Mm -hmm. They become radicals. Indeed. And so the, the point is we have to look at ourselves. Colonial people are gone, but they're not gone because we, we still prefer to go and buy toothpaste in Europe 
in, instead of figuring out how to make, make it here. Exactly. And David, you know, correct you something that uh, <laughs> Inno Toyo said. I, I think Africa is not a net recipient of aid. Africa actually is the one which aids the rest of the world, yeah. as mm -hmm. one of the head of state said. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. If you look at the resources that have been taken out of the continent and the value of those resources, we actually are, you know, net aid give us to Europe and the rest. Okay, well, let's leave it there just uh, for a short moment. We did sample a few views from a cross-section of citizens across the continent to get their feelings on Africa Day and what it means to them. Let's take a listen before we wind up the conversation. It means as black people, we shouldn't lose the sense of who we are, our traditions. We must also always remember where we come from. Africans are unique people and we must cherish that. We need to harness the resources that we have and work together as a people and not rely on foreign aid. We Africans need to be closer, as we are like one nation. We share the same future, so we should be united in every step we take. Well, indeed, encouraging to see that there is a sense of optimism from a few of those voices we heard from. But let me bring the question to you. It is our final question as we are out of time. But uh, just to each of you, and I'll start with you, Professor, what does Africa Day mean to you? And what does it mean to you to call yourself an African? I'm a very proud African, and I'm a free man. And I can make decisions based on my choices. Um, I, I, but I'm conflicted that as a country, as a continent, there are masses of people who are not free people. Mm. Uh, they are suppressed uh, one way or another. Uh, they are being used, uh, you know, as a, a product and everything. And we have to change our education system, our education system, uh, so that Indeed. we can match Singapore we yes. can match South Korea in terms of what they have done. Thank you. And I believe in this country, mm -hmm. we have the ability, and I, I'm teaching a lot of young people mm -hmm. who are really excited about Indeed. the future. All they need is opportunity Thank you, in order Professor. to uh, deliver. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Eurastas, please, your closing comments. When it comes to how far we have traveled on the road to prosperity mm -hmm. and development, we must accept that it's pissimally bad mm. and we could have done better. Indeed. But indeed. I don't think we can look backwards and keep on crying. Mm. As those that have spoken on the TV now have just said, yes, let's go out and unite. Indeed. That's why we have Agenda 2063. Indeed. Let's transform our economies. And that That's is indeed. what we reparate us and we we'll be equal citizens in the community of states. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Toyosi, as you've heard, there's some inspiring words from our guests here in Nairobi. A final word from you as to what Africa Day means and what it means for you to be an African. You know, as a young person on this continent, one of the things I've never been able to understand is how when, when I go abroad, I'm an immigrant. But when foreigners come into our own countries that are described as expatriates, I'm first a human being before I'm African. But there's everything for me as a young person on this continent to be proud of. Mm. If only we re return to agriculture as a continent, we will be able to turn to industrialization. We would empower our people, eliminate corruption, eliminate poverty. Thank and you, truly Toyosi. be free. Not thank you. Ourselves. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much, Toyosi. Those are very strong words there, bringing us to the end of our program today. But thank you all to my guests for your insightful uh, contributions. From Lagos, Nigeria, Toyosi Akarele Ogon Siji, a social entrepreneur and development expert. And my two guests in studio, Erastas Mencha, thank you so much. The former deputy chairperson of the African Union Commission. And uh, a big thank you to you, Professor Noah Midamba, an international relations experts. Now remember, we would love to hear your feedback and your feelings about Africa Day. So do make sure that you participate in the conversation through our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And do tune in again next time for more Talk Africa. From me, Lindy Mtongana, goodbye. <laughs>